Uh, the next speaker for the session is uh, Pravin Kumar Dahal. Uh, he's at the Macquarie University, and he's going to talk about Vaija to remote transformation and the Hawking radiation. So Pravin, whenever you want, the floor is yours. Thank you, Edward, for giving the opportunity to present the talk. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Vaija to remote transformations and what we can extract from it. So the basic motivation of the work is the combination of equivalence principle and Andrew effect. So equivalence principle uh, tells us that so we can chop up the space time into small regions uh, where so the small region can be regarded as locally inertial. And uh, Andrew effect implies that in such locally inertial regions, so uh, the Rindler observer or uniform accelerating observer sees uh, a part, sees a uniform, uh, yeah, a particle, uh, which is uh, empty for Minkowski observers. So when we yeah, combine these two effect, then yeah, we can so we can clearly see that yeah, yeah we can clearly see uh, the Hawking radiation or the Hawking effects. Uh, and another motivation is so we are doing this work is uh, uh, from a self consistent approach uh, based on the assumptions that uh, black hole form in a finite time and uh, and the curvature at the horizon of the black hole is finite. So we get a Vaidya metric in the leading orders. So to uh, at an excellent approximation. So yeah, it's desirable to uh, study the linear transformations of the Vaidya metric. So yeah, this is the content of my talk. Uh, so the first part, so I'll discuss about the transformations of from Vaidya to uh, linear coordinates. Just so, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, as I can say, a second simplest generalization, second simplest example after the yeah, source side to Rindler transformations. Uh, so we take a Vaidya metric and advanced coordinates, and we, yeah, just after some yeah, bit of trial and error, uh, perform this form of coordinate transformations, uh, after which we get uh, this form of metric. So if mass is constant and doesn't depend on the param time parameter V. So this is a Rindler metric in uh, advanced coordinates. However, here the mass depends on time. So we cannot like directly say that this is a Rindler metric. So we can, we have to reduce uh, further transformation. Uh, and so after doing a transformation, so after transforming to U coordinates, we get a metric in uh, double null coordinates, U and V coordinates. And so, if yeah, there was not a this factor, or if this factor was constant, so this is a Rindler metric. However, uh, now this is a, a conformally transformed Rindler metric, so in double null coordinates. And as we know, like Rindler metric represents uh, a wave of a Minkowski diagram, so only a one section of a Minkowski diagram. So we can do uh, further coordinate transformations of this form. Uh, for the maximal extension such that, yeah, this could be maximally extended into all the remaining four ways. So, yeah, we have, so from by metric by only one assumptions, uh, just like in, yeah, from a source side to Rindler transformations, uh, we have a conformal uh, Rindler space time and yeah, it's maximal extension. So the maximal extension of conformal Rindler space time. So, uh, and just, yeah, looking at this picture so uh, we can see like yeah, u v coordinates so u covers region one and three and v covers region one and two and if like I, if like there is a space time like containing u and v coordinates so it covers only region one so the intersection of like u and v and we can yeah, make some yeah, gen generalization or assumptions uh, to control the new this region into all the three regions. And as this is, so this figure contains only two null rays. So drawing a conformal diagram from this figure is easy. We just compress this figure to finite values and just draw a couple of null rays. And we know like how to draw space like singularities uh, to get yeah, this figure from this figure. And what we can note from this is like yeah, for this conformal factor, uh, the conformally transformed Rindler space time 
conformally transformed in low space time uh, is exactly uh, exactly same as the Schwarz side, uh, exactly same as the real space time, and its maximal extension is also the same. Uh, uh, from this transformation, what we can immediately see is we can extract Rindler horizon. Rindler horizon is the surface for which epsilon is zero. And we can see that this is Rindler horizon. So, and this has some like special properties. This is also the surface for which this second derivative is zero, uh, which gives event horizon. And this is also the surface for which this thing is zero, where A is the surface area along the set of outgoing null rays. And also the surface, also uh, the Conformal killing horizon of wide space spacetime. So, the yeah, Rindler horizon has some, yeah, coincides with some of the uh, known horizons uh, found in literature. Uh, now, if we just take yeah, the conformal Rindler spacetime and its analytic extension, and yeah, just yeah, by looking at this figure, so we are tempted to do uh, quantum field theory in. Yeah, conformal Rindler space time and its maximal extension, and it's just doing usual quantum field theory, just like in like easy way by saying like if we just forget this conformal factor and do conformal quantum field theory, uh, we know that like Rindler space is uh, a thermal state uh, with temperature one over two pi, so this is equivalent to acceleration one, and for this conformal thing, so we can do quantum field theory. And, and we can see that this state is a thermal state with respect to this Minkowski vacuum. So conformally transformed this Minkowski vacuum. So like we have to uh, include the conformal factor to get the actual temperature. And the way to include conformal factor is like by taking this relation and we can get uh, the, mm, the temperature measured by the thermometer. Here M depends on yeah, time parameter. So. Uh, in doing this calculation, so quantum field theoretic calculations, the assumptions we have made is like for stationary observers, so conformal transform space time is physically equivalent to uh, the ordinal, the normal space time, uh, except for the redshift factor. And another assumption is like the conformal factor, this thing, so it doesn't go to zero or uh, does not go to infinity or doesn't change rapidly such that uh, the space time diagram. So remains exactly the same as Rindler and extended, maximally extended Rindler. And yeah, we have made a particular choice of vacuum and the conformal properties of the space time. Uh, however, the justification of Adamson, so there are like quite a rigorous results in replacer and that justify these assumptions. So one of the result is like temperature, there are so there exists a notion of surface gravity, which is conformally invariant. So yeah, temperature and surface gravity of stationary black holes are invariant under conformal transformations. Uh, so if the conformal factor is finite. Uh, and another thing is like physical equivalence of conformal frames implies that uh, all the physical entities in entering into the theories should be, conf should be conformally invariant. And another thing is like, while doing yeah, um, QFT by yeah, bogey log of transformation procedure. So uh, we can see that or yeah, that method is explicitly conformally invariant because we use uh, the null rays close to the causal horizon in that method. So yeah, we can justify that. Yeah, we can just multiply by conformal factor. We can do ordinary quantum field theory and multiply by conformal factor to uh, get the temperature in that conformally transformed space time. Mm, obviously, uh, we have this. I have mentioned that uh, there comes a notion of geometric surface gravity, so which is equivalent to uh, uh, which gives the same horizon. The horizon of associated with this conformal killing vector is same as Rindler horizon. So, and the surface gravity associated with this is geometric surface gravity, and we can calculate this geometric surface gravity and we get uh, this value. However, yeah, as we have used uh, this conformal killing vector, so which is not normalized, uh, we should like, we should uh, normalize the conformal factor and 
we should also we should normalize this uh, conformal killing vector and we should also take this conformal factor and multiply with this surface gravity to get yeah, the physical surface gravity uh, in conformal space time and yeah we get uh, the surface gravity as this thing and if we take the limit thank you if we take the limit r goes to infinity then we get yeah, the temperature for the way the space time uh, so the advantage of this method is uh, but, uh, this transformation transformation method can be generalized to some uh, complex geometries like curved the space time which represents uh, a rotating uh, and evaporating and rotating black holes so we can just take a curved the space time and do uh, some transfer yeah, and do some transformations so these are confirm these are killing vectors in core geometry and we can do this transformation here and write the metric in this form. However, note that yeah, this is not valid everywhere, or these are an holonomic basis, which is only locally valid. And we can make the near horizon approximation like just as before, uh, using and adding this factor SV, so which determines the uh, Rindler horizon of the core weight geometry and substitute. Uh, this R and its derivative uh, onto the core by the space time, and we get this expression. And from this expression, to reduce this expression into uh, Rindler form, we have to assume that SV as this expression, and then we will get yeah, the Rindler transform or conformal Rindler transform of core by the metric. And yeah, from this, we can know the Rindler horizon associated with core by the metric. And from these transformations, and yeah, along with yeah, further little bit of yeah, algebraic manipulations, we can see that yeah, for the space time has also has associated temperature, and it just look like uh, the temperature for core metric with yeah, just dynamic m. Yeah, so we can apply the linear transformation procedure to extract the temperature, and this procedure is like easy to uh, generalized to dynamical axial symmetry and yeah so this uh, this method might be uh, more convenient than tunneling method because yeah this is conformally invariant and tunneling method is not conformally invariant thank you oh thank you very much Pravin. all right there's time for one short question Again, if there are any, we can move. Uh, uh, if you can stay around for the for the end of the session, and if not, we have, of course, Slack. All right. Since there are any, let's thank Robin again. Oh, there's a question, Albert. Go ahead, Albert. Yes. So, could you maybe clarify? I guess there are several points that are, that are related. I, I suppose if you can confirm that uh, this transformation that you are considering, or this connection between Rindler and Idea space time. Is only should I understand that only locally in the near horizon region, or can you make a more global statement? And somewhat related to that, uh, this vacuum state that you were considering for the Rindler space, how would mm -hmm. that be? So if you start with by the uh, and you start initially with no, uh, no, no, no matter in the center somehow, or, or no radiation at the center, so that you have Minkowski space time, you have a natural Minkowski vacuum as your initial state. And then you have this infalling uh, null radiation, but you had the natural initial state that you could choose as your as your vacuum. So that then evolves. So how would that be connected to the uh, Rindler vacuum that you were considering here in in the in the connection between five year space time and uh, and Rindler space time that you were discussing? Oh, yeah, thank you. So yeah, the first thing is like. So we are only interested in, in near horizon. So we are making the approximation uh, for yeah, to reduce near horizon into white geometry. So near horizon into Rindler geometry, uh, because yeah, we expect like the horizon of Rindler. So uh, the Rindler horizon or the horizon associated with that transformations is important for Hawking, Hawking radiation. Uh, so, and yeah, regarding... <laughs> So, so just the second question, I was going to ask, the second, or remind you about the second part of the question, right. the state. 
Yeah, so, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, so, I think I think we're running a bit late. So oh, can we? Okay, uh, are you gonna stay around, probably? No, it's all right, Albert. Uh, uh, are you gonna uh, stay around? For maybe. Uh, uh, probably not. So I might be happy okay. to answer on Slack. So yeah. Maybe, so maybe. maybe it's or yeah, or through email. Yeah, sure. I guess you can use Slack so that others can also see the answer. Then. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank I you. guess you're. That's all right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. I mean, the, sadly, we only have. Uh, time for brief questions uh, right after. Um, but then again, uh, we have Slack as well. Please let's thank uh, Gavin again. Thank you.